Folks, welcome to the Contrarian Report. Happy St. Patrick's Day. I have a lot to go over this week. A number of overbought and oversold stocks that we're going to look to want to discuss. Uh, the trade on Apple, the corruption on Wall Street that is, it's just, it's just, it's collusion. It's such a collusion. It's unbelievable. And I'm going to point it out. Let's begin with, you see, what, what CNBC wants you to do, what Wall Street wants you to do is they want you to wake up every day and they want you to pay attention to the futures. The purpose of that is to get you excited. If the futures are bright green, they're hoping that you're just going to go jumping in there at 9.30 when that bell rings, and you're going to buy stocks. And I, I caution my members with a, with a morning commentary, please don't chase these stocks higher because they're pumping the market. And they normally do it when the market is most overbought. The way I do it, the way I show my members how to trade the market is to pay attention to what Wall Street doesn't want you to pay attention to. That is the bond market. That is the currency market. And it's not all that complicated. Believe me, I'm not a genius by any stretch of the imagination, but I do know where to look to get a pulse check on where the markets might be headed. It gives me a clue. And as a trader, you need that edge. So I'm going to play a clip from last week's Members, the week ahead commentary. This is what I put together last Sunday and sent out to my members. And I didn't post this on the blog. This is for members only. Just listen to this. This is a weekly chart of the U.S. Treasury note price. Not the yield, but the price. And as you can see, the price has been stuck here in this range for quite some time now. And last week, it really began to show some strain. And it looks as if it may want to break down here. So I am going to caution against putting any money into bonds because I think that they're going to correct. If you take a look at these indicators here, this choppy action, I always warn about this. This type of choppy action, this volatility is a sign of a top. If you saw it inversely at a bottom, it's a sign of a bottom. Right now, it's a sign of a top. This is not a healthy chart at all. Looks like this. MACD is going to begin to break down more. If I had a hazard of guess, I think that the path least resistance for the Treasury bond market is lower. What does that mean for stocks? Well, it, it should be bullish for stocks because yields will rise. The Treasury bonds, you see money coming out of bonds going into stocks. Here, this line here is a resistance level that I've drawn on this black overlay of the S&P 500. This is the price performance relative to the U.S. Treasury bonds, and you can see how they trade in tandem. Now, while the U.S. Treasury price is beginning to break down, you have had the S&P 500 begin to break out. That's a positive, positive event. The one okay, now, using a similar chart, let's fast forward. Let's take a look about, look, let's take a look at what happened last week. What happened last week is that you had the 30-year Treasury bond simply collapse. And the S&P 500 continued, again, the S&P 500 is overlaid in black here, continued its trend higher. So money is flowing out of bonds and into stocks. That's the type of market action that you want to look out for that gives you a clear-cut clue of as to where the markets are likely to go. Money needs to go somewhere. Will all of it go into stocks? No. Some will go into cash. Some will go into other uh, different data securities. But a good proportion of it will go into stocks, causing stock, the stock market to rally. That's what we saw last week. And I'll be going into this again tomorrow on the week ahead commentary going out to members of where we can, where we can pretty much gauge where the market is going to head. And I'm going to be discussing the VIX because I have some concerns now, and we'll be getting into that in the week ahead commentary. If Please, become a 14-day free trial member. Get it for free. If you don't like it, cancel, and you can check it out. See if I'm right, see if I'm wrong. But I think if you take a look at my track record of stock picking and market analysis, it's a pretty god, god darn good track record. Let's fast forward to Apple. About... You, the, the collusion on Wall Street is just so rampant. It's just disgusting. About two weeks ago, and I'm a big fan of the Nigerians, 
It was Pete Nigerian on CNBC, and he was talking about the options action in the deep out of the money, meaning the 600, 700. He wouldn't answer the question. Which strikes were getting hit? All he kept doing was looking up at the answer, and you could read it on his face. He's like, I don't believe where they're going to bid this stock up to. And there was just thousands upon thousands, if not millions of contracts that were being bought up in the $600, $700 per share level. So fast forward, you had the iPad 3 alert or the new iPad alert that was, that was coming out. So there's your catalyst. They had an event that was going to take place. So in anticipation of that event, traders were buying up the out-of-the-money call options. Then collaboration with each other, each brokerage comes out with a new higher and better price target, $699 per share, $700 per share. It's all BS. They all had these deep out-of-the-money call options, and the key was to get them to be in the money call options or very close to it, and they made a killing. I went into last week short of Apple, got stopped out. And I told my members, listen, don't fight this. It's in the tape. They are taking this to 600, and they took it to 600 within two days from where I got stopped out. And thank God I stopped out. I'm looking to get short of it again. But thank God I stopped out. I took a loss. No embarrassment there because now I'm in a far stronger position. My capital reserves are intact. I'm able to open up that short position because I lived to play another day. That's the key to this game. That's what I teach my members. So let's move on to a couple of the trades from last week, or at least one anyway. Hughes, I told you about Apple. We took a, a small loss on that. No big deal. I'm not embarrassed to say it. If you have somebody that you're listening to on on uh, the Internet or, or wherever, on, on, uh, you subscribe to their newsletter, they send they never take a loss, they're a goddamn liar, and you should fire them immediately. Stop listening to them. If you do not take a loss in this business, you are either A, lying, or B, you're a fool. So let's move over to HUSA, H-U-S-A. I profiled this stock for two weeks in a row. This will be my third week discussing it. This is probably going to be my final week as well. We traded it the week before last for a profit, nice profit. And we took those profits, moved to the sidelines, and last week we bought back in again. We didn't buy a full position. We followed a normal discipline. And that discipline is, is to build a position. It broke down below the $6 per share historical support level, which we identified, which I conveyed to members. And we didn't add because we wanted the markets to tell us where the stock was going to go. Was there support? Were there buyers down here? And on Thursday, late Thursday afternoon, you can see some buyers coming in. But you know what? Six dollars was historical support. Now resistance. I knew there was a support level down by about four dollars per share. So my concern was is that the stock would continue to break down. I didn't add more to the position. I did have a long position, and sure enough, on Friday afternoon, they bid this stock up on a news announcement out of the company that there was talk of them being a bankruptcy candidate. The CEO said no to it. One of the reasons why we like the stock so much is because it had such a huge short interest and that any news such as what happened on Friday would just send the shorts flying for color, cover. And sure enough, you had a, it was over 30%, a close 28.6, almost 29% higher. Intra, intraday, you had a, in excess of a 30% move on this stock. I sent out an alert on Friday afternoon suggesting that if you had a large position in the stock, you know what? Start scaling out of it. Start taking some, taking some profits. You're probably going to see higher highs in the stock. But, again, take some profits off the table. Nobody ever went broke taking a profit. Take your wife out to dinner. Do the right thing. Relax so you don't have to worry about Monday morning. If it pulls back, you can always jump back in. But at least you have profits in your pocket and you have peace of mind. Enjoy your weekend. Enjoy your St. Patrick's Day. And that was my suggestion. Other stocks I touched upon last week. I'm not going to spend too much time on these. ASNA, this stock is still on our watch list as a short stalling here. I like it more now than I did last week. MNTG, MTR Gaming Corp. This is a, this is a beautiful short. 
Two of my members were short of the stock on this top and tail here. Congratulations to them. They made a beautiful, beautiful profit. This is one that's on our watch list. Francesca's holding. This one just appeared late last week. Big neutral day on Wednesday, top and tail on Thursday. A little bit of stalling action at the $31 per share on Friday. We're not going to go jumping into this one all at once. We want to see a little bit more of an indication, a clear sign of that the risk reward is in our favor. What does that require us to do? It requires us to A, check for historical resistance on the stock. B, check the short interest to make sure there are no dumb shorts in here that are going to get squeezed at the last minute on an upgrade of the stock. That's why short interest is important when you're looking to short a stock. Let's move on. Bonton Stores. I profiled this one last week, and I said it is an R next to Bonton Stores, and that R stands for respect. Even though you had topping action here, you had a 47% short interest in the stock. You just don't go jumping willy-nilly into the stock on the short side. And sure enough, they continue to bid the stock up higher. There are reasons why I'm looking to short the stock now, and I will be going into that with, mem to, with members on the week ahead commentary. Let's move forward to CKEC, Carmike Cinemas. Never heard of them, and I really don't care. Uh, topping sales here. The end is near for this stock's rally. We'll probably get involved with this stock early next week. ACAT. This is on my list last week. It's uh, it's really not that much of a short anymore. Perhaps if they bounce it off of the 39.50 level, they rally it up to 42 or lower, and then it fails, meaning it rallies to attempt to take out the $42 per share level, fails to do so, and then begins to roll over. That's a lower high. That's an indication the stock is going to head lower, probably break support here. What we would do is open up initial position here, wait to see if we're right, put a stop loss just above that $42 per share level. So if we're wrong, well, we get stopped out with a small loss. No big deal. But if it rolls over and takes out support here, then we're going to want to add to that position because the market is telling us that profit takers are coming in and they're pulling profits off the table. And the path of least resistance has now changed to the downside. The risk to reward is in our favor. For Lou Pharmaceuticals, never heard of them. Uh, lots of topping tails here. The... End is coming near for this stock as well. Again, we need to check for historical resistance and the short interest on the stock. And we'll keep an eye on the indicators because it's the market that tells us when to get into a stock. We don't just decide, oh, well, it feels like a good time. No, we look for our indicators to get long or short of a stock. That's the key. And you have to learn how to build your positions. If you do not know how to build your positions, you should invest in mutual funds. Dollar cost average is the best way you don't lose money. If you are able to be disciplined with your buying, then the contrarian trader is for you. Sign up for the 14-day free trial offer. Next stock. This is a stock we're looking to get long of. Summit Hotel Properties, symbol INN. Nice little bottoming tails here. These moving averages are concerned. Massive, massive capitulation volume. I wouldn't say that I'd be willing to go jumping in on Monday morning to buy this stock, but we're very, very close. I happen to like the stock. We'll check for the, the other. Again, I, I, I'm not a genius and I repeat myself because I keep my formula simple. It's simple to understand. My formula for this stock is just the inverse of what I would do with a short. I want to go in and I want to take a look at the short interest. In this case, the inverse relationship of having high short interest means is that I have shorts out there that are going to want to look to take profits. And I want to look for historical support because there are buyers down there that are willing to add more to their position. STRI, this comes from fellow member Shane. Uh, Shane provided us with a really good, great trade last week and this is his new trade here it's also on my on my uh 
screener as well. And Shane and I were swapping emails on Friday afternoon. And uh, I said, you know, let, let, let's, let's just watch this one. And I'm glad we did. We could see some lower lows here. Uh, again, we want to keep it simple. We want to check for short interest, historical support, and we want to keep an eye on our volume, which is a bit higher on Friday, and our indicators. And they'll tell us when it's time to get long or short. You don't need to sit in front of your computer all day long. You don't need to do that. That's day trading. You don't need to day trade. I don't day trade. What you need to do is analyze at the end of the day how your stock closed the previous day or that day when you're having a cold beer at night and you have time to relax and analyze. You don't want you you don't want the markets open. That way you don't make a stupid trade that gets you into trouble. So you want to take time, analyze your stocks in the evening or early morning, set your computer to execute trades at specific uh, price targets, and take the emotion out of the business. Once you take the emotion out of the business, you're going to be a very, very dangerous trader. And believe me, even these guys on Wall Street with the algorithms and the computers and all this crazy stuff, they take the emotion out of trading because they know that it's the devil. The emotions of the devil in this business. So take the emotion out of trading. Last stock, ANTH. It's another stock that we're looking to long. Nice day on Friday. Good. This is a key reversal on good volume. This is another pharma stock. It's not time yet. The indicators are telling me that. I'm going to go into that with members, but it's not, the coast isn't quite clear just yet on ANTH, but it soon may be. Folks, Enjoy the rest of your St. Patrick's Day. Enjoy your Sunday as well. If you have any questions, please, I don't want anybody losing money. You need to be careful of these thugs on Wall Street. I beg of you, shoot me an email. Even if you're not a member, if you have a question, I'll clarify it for you. Join the 14-day free trial offer. Check out my commentary, which is going to be released tomorrow. And I will talk to you soon. Again, have a great weekend. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Bye-bye.